He's also worked alongside and with some of the best in our business, and Greg Popovich, R.C. Buford, and Sam Presti, just to mention a few. As we were going through our process, we were looking for uh, an individual, a leader, who would bring championship organization experience, was a great strategist, and brought with him a sound system and approach to evaluating talent. A leader who's capable of guiding us and building us a championship level basketball operation. While there were very many worthy candidates, Rob stood out to us for both his experience in working for those organizations that we've mentioned and what we feel is a strategic, systematic approach to building a basketball operation. As we've said many times here, our goals have not changed. We're focused on putting a winning product on the floor each and every year and sustaining it and putting that winning product together for our fans and our community to build towards a world championship. We feel that we've had a strong record of success at the Orlando Magic to this point and that is primarily due to the leadership of the DeVos family and the assets and resources that they've given this organization uh, in their commitment to winning, putting those resources in place to help us achieve our goals. We stated it before, uh, but the DeVos family ownership is one of the most successful in the NBA, uh, having now tied for the highest winning percentage in the Eastern Conference during their ownership of this basketball team. They've done everything they can and deserve to win a world championship. We now have to take those assets and build a sustainable model in order for them to realize that first and hopefully several more world championships in the future. Uh, with us today is our chairman, uh, and representing the DeVos family, uh, I'll turn it over to Chairman Dan DeVos. Dan? Thank you, Alex. Thank you all for being here. It really is an exciting day for the Orlando Magic organization and for the entire DeVos family. Uh, we've been through a process that Alice explained, and we are very thrilled with, with the outcome. When, when we set out on this, on this journey, we had some very specific criteria of the type of person that we were looking for, and we were very happy with how the way it turned out. We, we had the ability, as, a, as many members of my family, including my father, to meet with Rob just a few days ago in the last week up in Michigan and spend a number of hours with him talking about a variety of different things. And became, every single member of the family that was there came away very impressed with his thought processes, his systems, his analytics, and his desire, as is our desire, to have a championship team. And as Alex said, not just once, uh, but one that we can have championships multiple times. And so we are very excited about opening this new chapter for the Orlando Magic. We think the opportunity continues to be strong for the organization. And with, with that, we are, we are excited about the future. We're excited about the city and what's going to be happening here in the city in the future. And with that, I'd like to introduce the new general manager of the Orlando Magic, Rob Pennington. Thank you, Dan. This is a, a very exciting and, and humbling day for my wife, Marissa, and me. Um, I'd first like to thank you, Dan, um, and Alex, and the entire DeVos family for the, this incredible opportunity. Um, it was clear to me in our first meeting and in subsequent meetings how committed the family and the organization is to winning, and not only winning, but doing things in a certain way. And that was something that, that really resonated with me um, personally and something that, that I got excited about. Um, I'd also like to thank everyone I had the privilege to work with and work for um, in Oklahoma City the past few years. Led by Clay Bennett, Sam Presti, and Scott Brooks. My wife and I will, will forever be grateful for the years we spent there, it's a, it's a special place and a special city and a special team. Um, you know, the more that I thought about the situation here and, and the more I uh, spent time with Dan and Alex, it became quite apparent to me 
that their commitment to winning and doing things in a first-class manner was not only genuine, but, but also rooted in a set of core values and a set of core beliefs in terms of how they want to do things and how they want to get things done. And, and that was something that I felt we had some real compatibility. Um, and we were in sync with, with how we want to run things, what our goals are, but more importantly, the values and, and the vision uh, that we want to sort of guide our path and put us in, in a direction that create some success for us. Um, simply put, our, our goal is to build an elite basketball operation, both on the court and off the court. That's the goal. And as we continue to talk, um, I think there are three concepts that, that we need to stay true to. The first is to stay strategic. Um, strategic in everything that we do, in every decision that we make. We uh, really have to stay committed to the discipline and the consistency that, that that will take. Every decision we make will be well thought out, will be well planned, and ideally each decision will set up the next decision, which will set up the next decision, and so on and so forth. So staying strategic is important, staying systematic in how we come to decisions. Being process-based, being process-driven, having the discipline and the consistency to, to stay true to our process and trust that the information that that process yields will be beneficial to our decisions and the process will really dictate how we gather and manage and ultimately interpret information to make decisions and put our organization in the best position we can put it in the information we have. And if we can stay strategic and we can stay systematic, the end goal is to be sustainable and to create something that has some longevity to it, some continuity to it, again both on the court and off the court and ideally putting in place a basketball operation and, and a group of players who are fans and, and this city and this community and all of Central Florida can, can rally around and support, be proud of, and, and relate to. So those are the goals, and I'm excited to get to work with our staff and roll our sleeves up. We're going to embrace the daily grind. We're going to embrace uh, chipping away at, at trying to get better each and every day and, and trying to get incremental gains and incremental success, and, and we'll, we'll take it from there, but it's a humbling, exciting day, and, and I'm excited to get to work. So uh, we welcome Rob and Marissa to our Orlando Magic family, and we'll be happy uh, to answer any of your questions. Okay, so if you could please wait for a microphone and please state your name and affiliation. John Denton, OrlandoMagic.com. Rob, can you talk about eight years ago you were an intern and, and your climb, how you've been able to do this in, in such a short period of time? Sure. The easy answer is a lot of luck. <laughs> and I've had the, the fortune to work in some incredible places with some incredible people who have instilled certain beliefs and, and philosophies and, and disciplines <clears throat> across the board. And I feel incredibly fortunate and grateful to have worked for so many great people, uh, it would take me three hours to name them all. Um, but just, you know, I, I think to an extent we're all creatures of habit and creatures of our environment. And I'm certainly a, a beneficiary of that. Pat? Rob, Pat Clark from Lesh. Some of us in this room don't remember being 30 years old. <laughs> <laughs> These are trying times for this franchise. Uh, your fingerprint's going to be all over this team for some time to come, which involves an enormous amount of pressure. What is it within you that believes you are the guy, short of all the experiences you have, that you're the guy to do the job? You know, I think, I think there's a vision and, and a process-oriented approach that from top to bottom this organization is committed to. And I feel that the people will be able to help make decisions within our basketball operation, the preparation we'll be able to put in, the consistency and the diligence and the detail that we'll, we'll use to, to scrutinize and analyze all facets and all angles. I think that if we stay true to what we believe in, uh, we'll put ourselves in, in a position to make good decisions. And There's no question there's pressure. Um, this, is a, this is a pressure business and you know you got to earn your keep. Nobody's gonna, gonna try to do any favors for you, so we're gonna just keep our head down and keep our sleeves rolled up and, and get to work. Trish, 
Rob, Josh Robbins, Orlando Sentinel. What is your time time frame for selecting a coach, and how many people do you have in mind at this time? Sure, we're uh, we're going to get started on that process right away. For the sake of the integrity and, and the confidentiality of that process, I, I'm not going to go into too much detail right now, but I can tell you that we'll be starting that process immediately. And we're going to look for candidates who are aligned with, with the vision and the philosophies and the values that, that Dan and the DeVos family uh, hold true. And, and we're going to use that to help guide our search. And I think at the end of the day, without getting into too many specifics, we're going to look for someone who embraces and, and takes pride in preparation, someone who can communicate effectively, and then someone who's going to embrace player development and really use that as a vehicle to, to accelerate the growth of our roster going forward. Is the goal to have a coach in place by the draft or by July 1st or a certain date? The goal is to, to make sure that the process stays true to what it is we're looking for. And I don't think it, it makes a whole lot of sense at this point to put a, a time stamp on, on the timeline. Mike? Mike Bianchi, Orlando Sentinel. Rob, um, Pat just referred to your youth being 30 years old. You are the youngest GM in the league right now. Do you think your youth uh, will help you, hurt you, or make any difference at all in the job you do? You know, I think the underlying factor is the relationships you have around the league and, and the, the level of respect that, that you deal with, whether it's from you or from the person you're speaking with. So I think that um, age is what it is. I, I think you're judged on the quality of your work, the way you treat people, and the way you handle your business. And I'm confident that, that we'll be able to uh, to put ourselves in positions to make really good decisions for our organization. Dick? Uh, Dick Scanlon, AP. Uh, this could be addressed to Alex or Dan or anyone or, or Rob. Um, is the coaching decision 100% Rob's call, or will there be input, or will there be like a committee? How will it be decided? You know, I, I think we've outlined that uh, a little bit in the past, and, and we're going to remain consistent to it. Uh, we're going to ask Rob as our general manager, as our head of basketball operation, to drive the process. Um, and uh, like any other of the major decisions uh, that, we, that we will make as a team moving forward, you know, Rob will bring his recommendations to myself and the DeVosses, and we'll have the opportunity, just like uh, the DeVosses had the opportunity to meet our finalists, uh, you know, in our general manager search. Um, we'll live to the same process with our head coaching search, and collectively we'll make the right decision you know, for our organization. Rob, can you talk about beating Mr. DeVos uh, up in Michigan and how did that go? What, what kind of impression did he make on you? Very impactful. Um, my time in, in Michigan with the DeVos family a sensational experience, it really was. It was um, really organic, the, the conversation and, and the sense that I got from, from Mr. DeVos and the entire family was one that, um, you know, these people are about the right things. And they're committed to staying true to what they believe in and staying true to a certain set of values that, that guide all the decisions that, that trickle down within the organization. So um, it was a privilege and a, and a pleasure to, to get to spend some time with them. Name and affiliation, please, Mike. Mike Bianchi, Orlando Sentinel. Rob, everybody knows about the Dwight Howard situation. When do you plan to meet with Dwight Howard? Alex, will, will that be you and Rob, or will Rob take over that job? Well, you know, clearly clearly Dwight is, is one of the best players in the NBA. His, his resume speaks for itself. And what I can tell you is we, we look forward to continuing our dialogue with him. I know personally I look forward to, to sitting down with Dwight and sharing with him the vision and the direction we're looking to go. And I also look forward to hearing from him and listening to him as to, to what his thought process is and, and where his head's at. And, you know, at the end of the day, we'll move forward and, and take it from there. Andrew Melnick, ESPN Florida, and Howard the Dunk. Uh, Rob, how do you plan on implementing some of the new technology like advanced metrics and player tracking? You know, we're going to try to implement anything and everything that makes sense to what we're trying to do. So we'll look at all the technology, um, all the grassroots mechanisms, and we'll try to blend it all together to, to create an outfit in a, in a basketball operation that is innovative and thorough and, and blends sort of all different areas of, of evaluation and research and, and analytics to, 
ultimately make decisions we feel are in the best interest of the organization. Rob, um, Dick Scanlon, AP. The, um, the draft, of course, is coming up immediately. Uh, was the draft, uh, studying of the draft, was that among your uh, duties in, uh, in Oklahoma City? Is that your expertise? Or one, one of your... It was definitely something I spent a lot of time doing, and, and my wife can attest to that. She didn't <laughs> see me very much. Um, but yeah, I, uh, you know, we're excited. The draft is right around the corner, and we got a lot of work to do to, to make sure we're prepared for it. I'm confident it will be. So, can okay. Pedro, go ahead. Sure. Uh, Rob, over here, Pedro Silva, so from Orlando. Um, all your relationship with guys like Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook, um, how is it like, and how can you implement that type of relationship that they have with Orlando Oklahoma here in Orlando with guys like Jameer Nelson and Dwight Howard, especially Jameer, who's also his contract is up pretty much, or his player option, I should say. How can you describe it? You know, I think one of the special qualities about Thunder organization is is the vision and the type of communication that comes from from Sam and Scott. Um, they're very direct. They give everybody a, a certain role and a set of guidelines as to hey, here's how we're going to do things. And I think that at the end of the day, it's not necessarily about what you say; it's about what you do and how you do it. And a lot of times, actions speak louder than words. And I think that when you have players who are committed and about the right things and have certain makeup characteristics that allow them to be successful and continue to get better. That, that makes it easier on everybody. But I think when you combine that with, with direct, straightforward communication and leadership, uh, I think that's a good mix. And, and I think going forward here, um, we'll lay out exactly what it is we're trying to do. There, there probably won't be a whole lot of bells and whistles on it. It's going to be straightforward and, and pretty basic, um, at least in terms of the values and culture and the identity one build. Okay. Yes, hi. I'm Farah Perret. I uh, work for Univision in Orlando. I just started this week and I'm 30, so I understand. <laughs> um, welcome, and um, I'm excited for you. I wanted to know, like, I read that even with the Spurs, you help in the recruiting of international players. Are you planning to do that with Orlando? Sure, you know, <laughs> basketball is a global game, and we'll certainly be scouting and, and doing our research across the globe. Does that mean we're going to draft an international player? Does it mean we're going to sign one? Maybe, maybe not. But it's certainly going to be incorporated into our process thoroughly. And it's something that we're going to put a lot of time and resources into. Tom? Tom Johnson with uh, Fox 35. The average age of the roster, Magic, about 26, 27 years old. You're a lot closer than a lot of GMs to the age of the players. How do you think that might help you in this new role? You know, I think it just comes down to the relationship you can build and the communication style you have. And I think there's going to be a lot of back and forth in terms of how we cultivate that relationship. I think there will be certain areas that, that I might be able to identify with, with those guys. Um, there are going to be certain things that they'll be able to help me with. So I think my vision and my goal is, is to build a relationship based on synergy that, that puts us in the, in the position to be as successful as we can. Pat? Alex and Pat Clark from Wesh. We heard from Rob about Dwight. Can you follow up a little bit on that with regard to where all of that is? Have you talked to him at all recently? And if it does come to the point where you do feel that you have to deal him, whose decision ultimately is that going to be? Is that going to be yours? Will Rob be part of it? Dan, how's that going to work? The communication with Dwight and his representatives continue, has continued. Uh, and we will continue to have regular communication. Uh, with Dwight and his representatives and you know our our position hasn't changed you know we clearly would uh, rather you know Dwight be with us with us long term and uh, ultimately you've heard me say the decision is up to Dwight Dwight's got to decide whether he wants to be here or not um, and ultimately you know we will collectively make a decision that's in the best interest of our organization um, I, I, I think as you've seen in this process and as you've seen us um, operate over the course of the last uh, nine months in particular, um, clearly Rob is going to run our basketball operation and it's going to be his role uh, to bring final recommendations to myself and to the DeVosses um, and like any major decision, uh, you know, we will make them collectively 
And at the end of the day, when you talk about a decision like a general manager, when you talk about a decision like a head coach, <coughs> or um, you know, a decision with a major franchise player, uh, the DeVosses are the final say. You know, Rob and I will bring our recommendations you know, to the DeVosses, uh, and they'll be well thought out. They'll be process driven, as, as Rob has outlined. Uh, they'll be well researched. And, and ultimately, um, we'll bring a recommendation to the devices and they'll make those final decisions. Rob, Josh Robbins, Orlando Sentinel. When do you plan to reach out to Dwight and Dwight's agent? Is that going to occur after you hire a coach? And uh, yeah. Again, not, not to get into too many specifics, what I can tell you is in the very near foreseeable future. <laughs> <laughs> what's, your, what's your understanding of where the relationship stands between him and the franchise. I do have an understanding on it, and, and at the current time, I'm just going to keep that behind closed doors. Okay, we have time for a couple more. Anyone else? Josh? What are your plans for how you're going to structure the department? Uh, do you anticipate being able to add a net gain of, of staff in the department? And what about the, the people who are currently working there? Sure. One of the, the driving forces and motivation for me in this position was the resources that, that Dan and Alex had laid out for me. You know, we'll have resources to, to create a, a basketball operation that, that we feel puts us in a position to be successful. And that's the goal. We want to have good people in the right positions. And that's what we'll set out to do, identify who are the people we need to put in the right spots and, and figure out who those people are. Jamie? Uh, Jamie Say from WKMG. Alex, at the beginning of this process, was his age ever a concern, and how exactly did he get on your radar? You know, I, I think Dan has said it best. As, as we've gone through this process. You know, it, as you read Rob's resume, it doesn't have his age on it. And his experience and what he's done in the organizations that he's been with far exceed his years. Uh, and clearly that's what's important. You know, it's important, you know, the experiences that he's had, the people that he's worked with, the people that he's learned from, and the hands-on experience that he ultimately has had in the roles that he's had in San Antonio and Oklahoma City. That's the most important thing. Um, age is not a factor. Experience and what you've done and who you've worked for and the habits that you've developed, that's what's important in being successful in this role. Any final questions? All right, thank you very much. Uh, we need to get Rob and Marissa back to the